Whoa! What's up guys? Tim with Great Lakes Flying Outdoors. And um, this is kind of, today's actually not the first day I'm out fly fishing, but I'm putting the final touches on a video I've been working on. Um, I actually got a lot of support on a Lake Michigan fishing page on Facebook from over 300 people, which is so nice. Um, as you can see, I'm in a dinghy. I'm not in a bigger boat. I wish I had a bigger boat, but I'm in nursing school. I can't afford it. So uh, I make do with what I have. Um, so I'm out here fly fishing. Uh, today I'm actually really close to shore. This is a great day. Um, the previous two fish that are shown in this video are out a hundred and some feet, like 110 and the other one was in 70 something. Um, those days my fish finder, this guy right here, the wire had broken. So I had, I had nothing to fish off other than my GPS and old coordinates and just using birds, fishing the old way, I guess. Um, but I'm going to show you how I put fish in the boat using a fly rod, not using live scan. There's nothing wrong with having the really, you know, pan optics and all that. If you have it, awesome. You're going to stay on the fish even better. But you know, what I've done here is I'm fishing off of uh, reef point reef at the very end of it. There's a red buoy, like 50 feet from me to the left and um, I just put a coho in the boat. Um, there's fish all over the place. Uh, water temp 6-8 on the surface, which I thought I wasn't going to run any of the fish where I'm, I'm at, but as I started to come out, I started marking uh, schools of fish. There's birds all over the place and sure enough, there's fish all over this big area I'm in. I'm going to show what I'm doing. It's not super complicated. Um, the biggest thing I'll tell you you have to have is patience, obviously, and um, just the will to do it. I've got trolling rods with me in case this was going to be a bust. And my biggest problem in the beginning was not putting the trolling rods away. Hitting a school, rods going off, it's like it's so hard to put your, your other poles away. So you've got two choices. Come out with only your fly rods. Or I like to use my trolling rods to find fish a lot of the times. Where today I'm just lucky I didn't have to do that. Um, because I'm by structure, so that made it a lot easier. But um, yeah, I'm going to talk about the line I use, the fly I use, um, how I'm fishing the water columns. And um, hopefully I'll at least get another fish on, maybe a few more. And I really hope that this video helps you do the same thing. Okay guys, I'm gonna talk safety real quick. Uh, if you're fishing by yourself, um, or if you're fishing with friends, this is gonna be a universal video that I put in both, you know, most of my videos. Um, you know, have PFD ready, have one on would be better. Um, obviously have your floating seat cushion, which I got up here, fire extinguisher, flares, horns, flashlights. I like to have an extra headlamp on me. Um, always have a radio, make sure it's charged, charge it the day before. Uh, make sure your canister, if you have a, a self uh, inflating, is, is properly installed and not expired. Like I said, I tether myself, I'm by myself. So if I go over, I don't have a kill switch attached to me when I'm using my Minn Kota. Um, so if I go over, I'm attached to the boat. So just keep that in mind. Be safe. Even if you're in a bigger boat, it, you know, this is a dangerous waterway. I might be 12 and a half feet long, but if you're 20 feet, you're still not that big for such a big waterway that can turn violent right away. So just, you know, stack the odds in your favor and uh, be safe out there, guys. All right, so here's the first technique that I like to use. Um, this is primarily, a, a, you know, the whole reason for it is I'm searching for a school. So I've got two conventional rods going. I've got, in this video, I've got a, a, a Dipsy and I've got a planer down the, out there. And um, at times I run two Dipsies, at times I run a, a Dipsy planer or a Dipsy downrigger. But I'm just using the speed of my boat to help strip and speed up my fly, giving it a regular um, look in the water and I'm just looking for a school because they're not always immediately under your boat So you got to look around so it's just a good way for me I initially started doing this just to pass time when I was by myself um, My fly is probably working in the top one to maybe two possibly three feet I cast out about 30 feet from my boat and then I just let out as much line as I can So I've stripped out about all the way to my backing So I've got all my weight forward on the floor and then what I do is I cast out 30 feet and then I just kind of swish the rod tip back and forth to let out really quickly that extra line, which gives my sinking line and my really heavy fly enough time to kind of sink down to maybe 10 feet, maybe a little bit deeper. And then as it goes taut, the fly will immediately shoot up um, towards the surface, making it look like a fleeing minnow. And um, the steelhead I caught, that's how that one went down. Um, kind of got it right as I got to the end of my line. Now it looks like I'm going pretty fast here and it looks real wavy. It's not. It's just 
I don't have a gimbal. I don't have something to stabilize my camera. But um, I'm just kind of stripping the line, looking for fish. And when I find them, I, I reel in and I try to sit on the school. I got one on my fly rod finally. I've been waiting a long time for this. I gotta slow down. Wrong direction. Uh, probably a coho. It's way out there. Uh, coming at right at the boat. Oh uh, shoot, come on, slow down fish. Uh, it's gonna get into my other lines. hook the line and I'm just gonna deal with it. Oh I hooked my planer board. Luckily I see back or I see my my sinking line. I'm not going fast enough um, to fight the southern wind. I think I'll be okay. This is just gonna be a pain in the butt later. There it is. There it is. Woo! You are making a mess for me. But this is huge. I'm out in 100 feet of water and I'm just casting this fly rod and I just caught a coho. Woo! You are making a mess for me. And I'm gonna have a lot of line to have to fix here. That's an 80 pound test line that, that's for my camera, underwater camera rod. Oh my gosh, this is gonna stink. All right, let's net this baby. And uh, this looks like a steelhead. Oh boy, it's gonna see that freak out. Okay. I'm gonna probably just have to stop my engine. That's a nice steelhead right there. Uh, on the fly rod, 100 feet of water. Um, I slowed my engine down to fight it better. I'm surprised it didn't jump up at all, but I now have a horrible tangle. The planer on this side's sunken, so I'm gonna have to redo all my equipment here. So that's gonna be fun, but it was worth it for this steelhead out in uh, really deep water. So I'm gonna fix this up and try to get back on fish. All right, got one on. I just stopped off this reef. Oh, he's running at the run into the side. I don't even have a trolling mower in the water, but I had fish under me. Oh, it's hard to keep up with with this reel. There's a lot of fish right here, though. I don't know what it's gonna be. I'm really close to shore, and um, there it is, right there. Looks like a coho, small coho. Um, could have been more than 15 feet down. There we go. Give me a little fight near the boat, just like a coho does. All right, a little jump in. I guess I could set my drag a little looser for funsies. This whole area off this reef is loaded with fish. A lot of the other guys with bigger boats, and I don't blame them, because they can. They're going out real deep, um, over five miles offshore. Woo! That's a doozy. Little guy, but it's putting up a nice fight. Um, but if any of you are familiar with Reef Point Reef, um, it's a very, very, very unique uh, structure just off the uh, coastline. So um, doesn't surprise me that we got fish down in this water right here. And um, <laughs> I've only been out here for like five or 10 minutes. So this is really cool. I'm really glad. I did not expect to get a fish right here. Um, this thing is not, I bet you, I might, I might even jig for these guys on a normal rod. I brought one just for that purpose. Cause there's another guide out here doing that. Who's got, um, live scope and a lot of people can't afford live scope, you know, good for that guide. You know, it makes sense if you're a guide, I, I'm not trying to put them down. Um, 
but you don't need it you just need a fish finder i got a cheap garmin my garmin cost me about um 120 bucks and it helped me mark fish and now i'm about to put one oh in the boat there we go all right fly fishing i'm granted i'm not in 100 feet of water i'm out in 50 but i didn't need to go out that deep today so hey more power to me i guess Okay, sorry about the shakiness. I don't have a gimbal. I don't have any fancy camera equipment. I have a camera that's attached to a PVC pipe and it's just kind of wiggling. So I apologize for it. It's actually really calm out today. Um, so what I'm basically doing is I'm, I'm, I'm working over the school, stripping fast, letting it sink, letting it, like I said before, letting it sink for about a minute, two minutes if I really want to be persistent and patient. Um, I get it in. Um, don't be afraid to, to pull the fly all the way in and kind of do a figure eight. I haven't had that happen here, but I'm sure some of you have been reeling your lines in when you troll real, real fast. You're reeling it in and you get a fish, a coho chasing after it. So, um, you know, they'll chase stuff up to the boat. I've had that happen on shore with the trout, with brown trout. Um, so, um, actually with coho too, now that I think about it, my first season out fly fishing for coho, I had that happen. So, um, I didn't get it. But um, hey. I'm not casting very far from the boat. Um, I'm not casting very far from the boat. I'm probably casting out about 25, 30 feet where I know that I, I marked the school or in the, to the general area, at least I hope the school is. I have pushed a little south um, and a little west of where the bait is. It's mainly out this way. Um, but I'm probably gonna work this one more time, turn my motor on and fire up that way. I, if, if you have GPS that's hooked up to your trolling motor, you could sit on top of the school and just have yourself, you know, rotate on top of it. You'll be, you'll be sweet. But I don't have that. I've just got the little 55 pound thrust Minn Kota. Uh, I got my gas, I'll probably turn my gas motor on just to get there quicker. Um, but yeah, I'm just sometimes giving a quick strip. Sometimes I yank, give it a nice fast jerk with the um, rod tip. The thing that stinks though is you, you do pull it up really fast so you're waiting you know a minute or two for it to sink and then you're pulling it in in like five ten seconds so it's it's tedious um but don't let that get you down um just because it's a little tedious whatever you know just keep at it um and you'll get on top of them you'll get them um i did make a giant i'll show you what the fly is here in a second i did make a giant mardi gras pattern that i'm kind of excited to try um, this is here. Actually, you know, let me pull it in. I'll show you uh, Basically, it's just a bigger version of a, a peanut fly with a with Heavy I forget the weight of the dumbbell weight. I'll, I'll put that in on uh, you know somewhere down here um, during the video, but um, You know, it's it's beat up. It's not very pretty looking um, I'll show you one that's like finished but just fantastic and I make a really thin back part because that helps just give this nice action in the water and um, you really need for fly fishing you, you really unless you're you're fishing for fish that spook easy which coho don't you really want a lot of action you want a lot of flash a lot of color um, I've seen some uh, um, lures that people have tied that are pretty cool on a Facebook post I made and those I'm sure would work great but um, you don't have to be fancy necessarily to get these fish. I've been tying for, so I'm 34, I've been tying for at least 20 years and my flies don't look that fancy, but they catch fish, they catch a lot of fish. So um, keep that in mind. I'm gonna keep trying to stay on these fish. I'm really hoping to get one on camera, slam it into them, but I'm afraid I'll, I don't have a lot of SIM card um, space and I don't have a ton of batteries. So I do need to be um, careful about that. But if I don't do it in this video, I'll certainly do it in some video that I make in the future. Um, but that's, you know, I'm just casting 30 feet out, maybe even shorter than that. Sometimes in front of the boat so I can drift over, sometimes behind, just depends on what the wind's doing. And then when I move off the, the school, I just motor back to it. So that's what I'm doing. That's the technique. And um, yeah, hopefully it puts, I need three more fish to get my one man limit. So it shouldn't be that hard, I hope. So let's see what happens.
got another one on. God, they're so hard to keep up with. Looks like another coho. Trying to turn my camera out without losing it. Oh, it's just using its body. Probably a small one. Yeah, a little tiny one, but woo. Hey, if they want to fight like that, they can fight like that all day. Let me loosen my drag a little bit. I only got 12 pound tests on. All right. What a fun little guy this is. This, this spot, the schools over here are just insane. It's probably just going to be only coho, probably some steelhead, but um, I, I've, I have seen some fish down deep in like 39 feet. Um, could be because of where I'm at. Those could be huge drum. Could be kings, maybe lakers, who knows? Because um, it's obviously colder down there. There are some schools, small schools down that deep, but um, this primarily, I'm going to guess, this is just a nice big pack of coho. Just working right on top of them, which is good because, you know, when they see bait leave a, a bait ball, that's what they go after. Um, so that's what I'm doing. This guy's almost small enough. Because it's on the flower, I'll net him. But it's almost small enough to just yank in the boat. But I have a little class today. I do that sometimes when I'm by myself. Oh boy, there we go. All right, number two. Small guy, but I'll actually show you guys this one. There we go, little one, but put up a nice little uh, fight. All pissed off when it got close to the boat and jumped in, so I'm gonna take the hook out. I'm just gonna fall on the ground and uh, I'm gonna try to stay on top of these fish and um, maybe it'll be the first time and maybe I'll get a one man limit. I do wanna say, I'm pretty sure that my success right now is because I'm by structure, like I said in the start of the video, um, and there's just like, it's probably like a football area, uh, like football field area, size area that um, seems to be producing a lot of the marks on my graph. So um, I'll show you what the, the fish finder looks like. Uh, like I said, I got a really cheap one. So if I can do it with my $120 one, I'm sure all of you with your, you know, super expensive ones could easily outdo what I'm doing. Um, you just got to get on top of them and just try to stay, you know, mark it on the GPS. I've got three marks that I'm looking in in this area. Um, I'll show what that looks like as well. And I'm just kind of working. And then as the wind pushes me south, I just, I'll pull all my line in and I'll turn on my, my gas motor. I'll drive back up north and just let myself push through, drive back, push through, drive back. All right, guys, here's one of the bait balls. Uh, it's a little bit smaller than some of the bigger ones I found, and it's also just a tad deep. Um, you know, it's a lot easier when they're up in 20 feet opposed to 25, but not that big of a deal. But just wanted to show what the graph looked like. All right, so in case you guys are wondering what my setup is, it's pretty basic. Um, I've got the, um, the Reddington Vice fly rod, which I really like. I've caught a lot of big fish on it. It's a fast action, really gives me the power. I, I Primarily bought it for short casting, um, big flies in the wind for catching coho and browns um, during the uh, spring. You know, it's not a rabbit when the coho come close to shore. Um, I also use it in the rivers and stuff too. But I have a seven weight I like to use in the rivers usually. Um, I've got a uh, 12 pound test floral carbon. I'll show. Um, I'll talk about that more when I uh, land the steelhead, which will come later in the video. Um, and this, this, this leader I'm using is about eight feet long. I don't like it too long because it's hard to cast with a heavy fly. And then I've got sinking tippet, which is about 15 feet long. It's super fast. Uh, it's by Orvis. Just, you know, if you're looking for an Orvis, uh, super fast sinking line. It's pretty cheap even too. Um, you can get a uh, way forward line that's all sinking. Um, you know, I'm on a budget because I'm in school. So this was the cheaper option, although I do 100% think a sagit line or something would work way more efficiently to get your line nice and evenly down Not just kind of like how mine sings and then I kind of have to drive away from it a little bit To not make myself basically be pulling straight up especially when there's a current in the water as you'll see later in the video um, And then I've just got uh, it's just real 
uh, fly line uh, shooting weight forward um, just to help me with the winds uh, once again on the uh, shore pretty basic that stuff's kind of expensive but we all know that about weight forward fly line but um, we got a nine foot rod it's a nine weight um, when I'm casting top water which I today looks really calm where I'm at but I'm not far enough out for top water to really be very viable because there's bugs all over the surface of the water. You know, you're not really gonna attract much attention when there's bugs everywhere. Um, you, you know, it's, it's not the same as finding a scum line 10 miles out. Then you might see a, a you know, more fish situated around that. So kind of keep that in mind. Maybe I'll try to make um, a top water video one of these days or maybe early in the season next year when um, it's a bit earlier there's more steelhead close to shore and there's not a lot of bugs out yet I have seen a lot of coho hit the surface from shore and I haven't had a lot of time because I'm in nursing school and that just really kills my uh, spring my early spring season um, but I've, I've seen it on really beautiful warm days coho slapping at the surface and I would just love to uh, take off, I usually I use a medium action sinking line, a medium sinking um, on shore, take that off and just go top water. But this is the setup I'm using. Um, the steelhead, I really had to use this fighting butt. That, that guy, man, he really gave me a run for my money. That was awesome. Um, but this is what I'm doing, uh, nine weight sinking line, super fast sinking line, that's six, second, six inches per second, um, really heavy fly. Um, I'll, I'll make a video about how I make it. It's super easy. I'm sure any pattern would work as long as it's got some good flash and movement and you get on top of the fish. And um, yeah, that's the equipment I'm using. So um, yeah, let's kind of move on and see what else we can get into. Whoa! Still head on the fly rod. Woo! Oh, this is a big fish on the fly rod. God. See if it'll come up to the surface again. Woo! Oh boy! Oh shoot! Oh yeah! This is my rod. I've been trying to get one of these out deep. I couldn't even say for how long. I'm just gonna have to let this guy tire out. This would be nice to have a second person in the boat. To help get this planer in. Oh boy! Woo! Yeah! Yeah! This is gonna take everything I have to get in, and I'm not over exaggerating because I have a 12 pound test leader. I thought it was eight, but I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I put 12 on. But I, I, I have no idea. This backing is 20 pound, uh, maybe 25, and the weight forward, I'm not sure. Weight forward's pretty strong though. I'm not sure what to do with this fish. I have a lot of backing, a lot of backing I could give up. Um, woo -wee, you know you're tired when you gotta grab up higher on the rod. Give my uh, biceps a little bit of a rest. Oh boy, he is way ahead of the line. But we're getting in closer. I'm really hoping it's hooked good. I'm just little by little reeling, keeping my hand nice and tight on the spool. Up, oh, I'm into my planer. We're into the planer. So this is gonna make the fight difficult here. Ah, shoot. I mean, if that was smart, I would stop, but I'm trying to keep it away from my, um, my dipsy. Keep it from getting in this line. Oh my gosh, that mess with the planer is just a nightmare. The steelhead are so resilient. They don't want to give up. Uh, they're just an amazing species to have in this lake. I've caught wild steelhead in uh, California and they're just as cool. 
Um, all right, this is gonna be hard. Uh, you can see I'm, oh gosh, that's, that planter's just twisting and turning. Ay, 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 I think I, I am. I'm pretty sure I'm into my Dipsy too. So I've hooked all my lines. The steelhead is not giving up. It's beautiful. Look at it pinwheeling down there. It's like a big old fat tuna. I'm just... Oh, goodness. Just a fat steelhead. It's not the biggest one in the world, but boy, is it a big one. No, 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 no. Oh, it's really not easy to do on your own. Okay, it's in the net. It's in the net. Yeah! Woo! Equipment. Um, there it is. It's not the biggest steelhead, but man, this thing fought so beautifully. What a great time. I'm really grateful for this. All right, guys, I just want to wrap this video up by saying I had a lot of fun. Um, this was several years in the making. It's still not perfected. I kind of think July's gonna, it's just gonna get harder from here as the surface temps get uh, warmer. Um, you know, the thing that's hard about this type of fishing is if you don't get you what you wanted to get done in a season or you're busy during that season, you gotta wait till the next year to try to chase deep water fish. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't go drive out to 200 or 300 feet have your fly rods with you and you're trolling, you start seeing fish on the surface in the top 10 feet, bust out your fly rods. But I'm probably gonna start focusing more on um, stuff closer to shore just because, you know, it's getting harder and harder for me um, in this small craft to um, get out really deep. I don't really like to push past 120. You know, if there's a lot of other boats out, I feel a little bit safer in case something happens, but it just, you know, this is a dangerous waterway. So, um, this is probably going to be it for me doing um, fly fishing for silverfish for the summer. Now, if we get a flip where west winds make the um, surface temperatures really nice and cold, I'll be out here again looking for kings in the shallow water, not necessarily deep. Um, I'll probably give it a few more tries, but today was just really hot. It was awesome at first. Um, it was hot fishing wise to start and outside. It was about 90 degrees and the wind just wasn't really doing it. Um, so, you know, it's kind of tough. It was getting a little boring. I tried throwing my spinning rod out there, but I had lost the school. I could not find the school. I, there was a thermal. I was in 68.2 degrees of water. And kind of when the fishing slowed, I noticed the water had gone up to 70. So maybe there was something going on there. I did notice some other boats come around me or near me fishing like charter boats, and they were clearly getting fish. So there was an abundance of coho and silverfish in the area. But, um, I hope you guys really got something out of this. Uh, I, I'd be, I'd love to answer any questions. I've learned a lot from people already just talking online with folks and people on shore and whatnot. Um, I'm going to come back and fish. There's this, um, I guess, light beacon tower thing that's right off the, the very far end of Reef Point. And I've got some footage I'll show you here in a second. Um, and I could see fish down there. I couldn't get any on camera because I think my boat spooked them. But I do want to start fishing some um, areas closer to shore just so I'm not doing my whole summer, you know, fly fishing or trolling. That just gets kind of boring and I don't want to ever be bored of this. Um, so I, next year I'm going to try in the spring if I can swing it with nursing school. It'll be my last semester. So after that, I'll be good to go. Um, fly fishing close to shore again. Um, usually during the school semester, I just fish from shore. I don't have time to take my boat out. But um, I think that would be one of the best times to be fly fishing, to be fishing top water near shore because I've seen coho breach. I, I know you guys have seen coho and steelhead breach early in the season. Um, so I don't know exactly what they're eating, but who knows? Um, so for now, I'm going to sign off. Um, I hope you guys got something out of this. Once again, feel free to, if you want to like and subscribe, it's fine if you don't. And um, yeah, I hope you guys could recreate this. Just bring your fly rod with. And if you feel like using it, reel everything in, use it. If not, no big deal. So be safe out there and tight lines.